Hola everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Man, can you believe it's been a whole year since Princess Elena's show began on the Disney Channel? And, as I said while blogging Elena and the Secret of Avalor last November, Elena's show is a great ch show. Some of my favorite recent episodes being Navidad, Captain Turner Returns, my Fair Naomi, Crystal in the Rough, King of the Carnival, and Wizard in Training. Now, the film I'll be vlogging today is Elena's first TV special without Princess Sophia. But, is this special good? Well, let's find out. Airing on Disney Channel on August 12, 2017, the special is Elena of Avalor, Realm of the Jacklands. Now let's get started. Princess Elena travels to the magical realm of the Jacklands and inadvertently releases a mystical forest sprite that could endanger Avalor. So, what do I think of this special? Well, this was a really epic special. But before I get ahead of myself, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, since there isn't much trivia for this special, Let's talk about the animation. And in my opinion, the animation for this special is flawless. Now, since I already described that Avalor is like a Latin American style kingdom, let's talk about the Jacqueline's realm, Velastrea. Now, Velastrea is an enchanted realm filled with sentient magical beings, both good and evil. It is the home world to the mystical creatures known as Jacklins, and is ruled by Skylar and Nico's father, King Virago. The entrance resides in a hidden cave that only Jacklins can access. Humans are not allowed there because, years ago, a human accidentally released Kirin, an evil monster the Jacklins had their biggest battle against and won, but at a terrible cost. Numerous other dark forces have been imprisoned in Velastrea, as well as Marimonda, an evil forest sprite who tried to destroy every city at Avalor centuries ago, but was stopped by the sunbirds with ancient magic. In my opinion, the entrance to this realm is pretty similar to the Cave of Wonders from Aladdin. As for Velastrea, most of it looks like the Pride Lands from The Lion King, while the Jacqueline's castle looks like King Triton's castle from The Little Mermaid. Now, this special contains two morals. One, stand up for what you believe in. And two, never let your failure define you. Carry forth with confidence as ruler and guardian. Now, here's where we come to the songs in this special. In total, there are three songs featured here. The first song is Got It Down, sung by Princess Elena, who feels confident that she has got the hang of running the kingdom and looks forward to the day when she becomes queen in the next three years. In my opinion, the best part of this song is that it reflects on past episodes like Spellbound, Finders Leapers, King of the Carnival, and The Scepter of Light. The next song is a Big Deal, sung by King Virago, who explains the importance of the Jacqueline rules to Elena. And finally, the villain song, You Can't Catch Me, sung by Marimonda, as she taunts Princess Elena, who tries to blast her with fire spells from her scepter. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang notes, animation, and songs, let's talk about the characters and their voice actors. Our main heroine and future Queen of Avalor, Princess Elena, is voiced by Amy Carraro. Best known from the sitcom Young and Hungry. In my opinion, Elena has accomplished quite a lot ever since she became Crown Princess. And over the course of the show, we learn that Elena has some magic of her own, because 
Some of the amulet's magic seeped into her while she was trapped there. For example, Elena can see ghosts like the Chanules, and she can use magic from her scepter, like seeing through walls, light up dark rooms, even cast fire spells. But using the scepter too much can make her tired. Anyway, in this special, Elena uses a new spell from her scepter, which happens to conjure up illusions. Next we come to the current royal wizard of Avalor, Mateo, voiced by Joseph Haro. Over the course of the show, ever since Mateo defeated Fierro, he has become a talented wizard, and he's great at giving Elena advice, even in this special. Next we have my favorite Jacqueline, Skylar, voiced by Carlos Alaraquai. Who has done various voice work in Sophia the First, and is the current voice of Panchito Pistoles. Now, the reason why I say Skylar is my favorite Jacqueline is because he may be fun-loving, but he's also very loyal to Elena, and he stands by her side a lot. Next up is Skylar's little brother, Nico, voiced by Wilbur. Zaldivar. Nico first appeared in the episode Flight of the Jacklands, along with two other young Jacklands, Sila and Avion. In this special, Nico is close to becoming a, a guardian of Avalor, but fails after getting hit by a slingshot. But still, Nico makes a great supporting character, and I know that he'll be a great guardian Jacklands for Avalor. As for the other characters, we have Cheat Zephyr, voiced by Jess Harnell, who's best known for voicing Cedric in Sophia's show, and Wacko Warner from the Animaniacs show. Zephyr is mostly seen at the beginning of the special, giving a test to the Jacqueline trainees. He, along with Mateo and Miggs, say that the test will be divided into two parts. The first part of the test is a battle test, where they will face a magical enemy and defeat it without getting zapped. And the second part of the test is a search and rescue test, where they have to find three statues and bring them back to the pedestal within ten minutes. These are Victor and Carla Delgado, voiced by Lou Diamond Phillips and Myrna Velasco. They were first seen in the episode King of the Carnival, where they planned to steal the crown jewels and they tried to blackmail Esteban. When that plan failed, Elena banished Victor and Carla forever. However, Victor vowed to return and get revenge. In this special, they interfere with Nico's guardian test in order to get him sent back to, to Velastrea, allowing them to follow and gain access. They get into the portal when Elena uses the portal to speak with King Virago. Once there, they journey to a mountain location using a map that was given to them by Shariki, and free a forest sprite named Marimonda, and aid them in taking over Avalor. Later, the two wreck a trap that Elena set and reveal that they were the ones behind Marimonda's release. However, unbeknownst to everyone, Releasing Maramonda to invade Avalor was just a distraction, and Victor and Carla's real plan was to give a magic jewel that they removed to free Maramonda to Shariki in order to restore her youth, and, they, and she promised to make them Malvagos so they can conquer Avalor together. Now let's move on to the new characters, starting with Skylar and Nico's father, King Virago. Voiced by Andre Soglioso, who previously voiced Alakazar in Elena and the Secret of Avalor. To me, Virago is like a Jacqueline version of Mufasa from The Lion King. Also, Virago is about following rules and traditions when it comes to keeping Viestrea safe 
while Elena is more focused on doing what's right. Next up is Kita Moles, voiced by comedian Cheech Marin. Best known from The Lion King, Oliver and Company, Cars, and Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Kita Moss is a sunbird oracle whose nest is on an island in the middle of a lake in Vallestrella. In my opinion, Kita Moss is a real badass character. He teaches Elena how to use the scepter's illusion creating ability and gives her a magical jar to re imprison Marimonda. But after Elena captures Marimonda and gives back the jar to Kita Moss, he warns her of a darkness that she must overcome or she'll never become Queen of Avalor. And finally, we have our main villain, Marimonda, voiced by Noel Wells. Best known from Saturday Night Live. Marimonda is an evil, mythical forest sprite who has been trapped in a cavern in Vastrea. She has been released by Victor and Carla and plans to cover Avalor and Vines. In my opinion, Marimonda is pretty similar to Poison Ivy. And she likes to talk in rhymes. She's also pretty fast and sneaky, and she likes to toy around with her enemies. But it was very devilish when she captures Mig of a hostage so she can escape. The rest of the cast includes Jane Fonda, Julian Rose Reed, Chris Parnell, Jenna Lee Rosen, Yvette Nicole Brown, and Lincoln Melcher. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, for Elena's first movie without Sophia, Realm of the Jacklands is really an impressive special. It's intense, action packed, emotional, yet still maintains an uplifting tone. Plus, the animation is awesome. The characters are memorable and fun to watch. Plus, the three songs are great to listen to, and the two morals in this special are great to live by. Also, the cliffhanger at the end of this special gets me looking forward to what's next to come on Elena's journey to become Queen of Avalor. As for my final rating, well, I give this special a full 100%. Well, that's it for today, everybody. Be sure to join me again for my next blog, because I have to fulfill a birthday request for one of my best friends, and he's asked me to blog a movie from the mid-90s mixed with horror, adventure, and fantasy. Mustang Power.